Hello, I'm Andrew Hooker from Thatcham Research. I'm the Advanced Repair Studies Manager here at Thatcham. And it's my responsibility to have a look at some of the technologies that you'll be facing and will be facing in helping us to repair the cars over the next 10, 15, may perhaps 20 years. These are the technologies we'll be facing. I've got a couple of examples to show you here. Just to give you a hint at some of the technology uh, directions that have been taken by the vehicle manufacturers and what they all mean to you how you will prepare your people, your workshops, your equipment, your training and information requirements to face the future. This is the BMW i3. This is, whilst not a high volume vehicle, a good indicator of some of the technologies we will be certainly facing over the next 10, 15 to 20 years. The vehicle itself is a carbon fibre monocoque with plastic hang-on panels on it. This is quite, quite common of the strategies that are being employed by vehicle manufacturers today. Not just the people like BMW, it's not just the McLarens and Aston Martins, but General Motors, Ford Motor Company, all of these are looking at how we can actually integrate more composites into the vehicle. What this means for you is certainly, as well as the metal handling skills, we will also need to be looking at how we handle composites, how we repair, how we section these, bonding techniques, cold joining techniques such as riveting, mechanical fasteners will all need to be considered and chances are probably your apprentice of today looking to be working in the industry in 10-15 years time will probably be closer to an aerospace apprentice in terms of handling these type of materials and the right diagnosis and repair processes for these. So whilst this is a composite car what this does introduce to us is many different production processes have been introduced on the BMW i3 with things like clip-on external panels. These aren't even painted in the factory, these are actually supplied completely pre-painted. And these are the kind of things we're going to need to start looking at for the future. That the many of these components, many of these cars are going to be constructed in completely different ways to what we're used to today. So your actual process, even in your workshop, may be completely different. Whereas traditionally you maybe strip a car, do the panel work on it, paint it, refit it. That may actually all completely change. What we can see here is a lot more connectivity. This is a trend that is here to stay. People expect their car to be connected to the internet and that driving their car will not interrupt their busy social or work lives. Email, radio, telephone, communication, contacts, all this available information is in car. What this will also mean is eventually the car will be updated remotely. No more going into a main dealer to have software updates or recalls, probably it will be done over the internet. This for you as a repairer perhaps one day will mean when the car comes into you it will actually pre-diagnosed itself. You won't need to actually have specialist diagnostic equipment because it will be provided. Perhaps each of your work bays will actually have direct diagnostic contact with the factory, not your local dealer. Okay, we've talked about what is on the car. Let's talk about what isn't on this car. Certainly there's no petrol or diesel engine on it. This is obviously a battery electric vehicle with a large battery pack underneath and an electric motor in the rear. Just one of many that are starting to come to market as well as hybrid electric vehicles, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. But we're starting to see other technologies emerge now as well. What we're looking at now is hydrogen fuel cells hitting the road. New technology certainly to the automotive world. So, Hybrids and battery electric vehicles, we're starting to get used to those, but fuel cells, what do you do with those? How do you actually handle them in an accident? How do they need to be reinstated? What do you need to do for the repair process? Can you weld near them? All these questions we certainly need to be facing and how we actually answer them to give you the correct guidance, but you will need to learn this as well. So, gas handling, certainly for hydrogen, it's a very, very dangerous gas. It does need to be handled in the correct way. But it may not just be a hydrogen gas cylinder you find in the vehicle, it could be compressed natural gas, which is certainly taken off in many markets. So, different gas cylinders, different electrical systems, all of these become part of the powertrain options for future cars. All these are going to be things that you're going to need to face over the next 10, 15, certainly 20 years. Certainly as these technologies develop and battery capabilities get more and more advanced and these become more and more efficient, more and more desirable cars. Your customers will want them, you will need to know how to repair them. So, is it time to throw away your metal working tools? Certainly not. Steel technology is advancing, aluminium technology is advancing very, very rapidly. This vehicle, for example, is 44% advanced high strength steel. Very, very strong, stiff structure. All these materials, in fact, where you have boron steel along the A-post here, it's actually reinforced with a further boron panel. So, we're talking some very, very advanced and very, very 
challenging panels to repair. So those traditional skills are not going to completely go away, but what will actually come in is the fact there will be far, far more tighter parameters in terms of welding and joining of these cars. New advanced steels are just starting to hit the market now for the automotive manufacturers to work with. And certainly some of these are very, very challenging in production. So if they're challenging in production, what does that mean for you in repair? But before you get on to repairing this vehicle, you need to look about how you diagnose it, how you actually estimate the damage. This is just one example, but there's an awful lot of vehicles out there today that have some very, very stiff materials in them. And some of these material parameters could very much catch you out. What you need to be aware of is where these panels could actually transmit the damage elsewhere through the load pass on the car. Even simple small cars today have some very complex load pass. So what you may find, the damage may be transmitted to somewhere on the vehicle that you hadn't first considered. That is very, very important. Before you even consider the repair process, you look at where the damage has occurred. Okay, back to electronics. Electronics isn't going away. Driver assistance systems. These are very, very, very popular at the moment because manufacturers can sell these and they win that technology race with their competitors. So we're starting to see more and more cameras, LiDAR sensors, rain sensors and various other electronic devices appearing into the windscreen. Certainly over the next few years we've seen a massive increase in the number of head-up displays. Some of these need very, very specific calibration, some of them don't. But it does depend on what the actual device is and what the actual model is. So you need, again, very specific repair information to guide you to ensure you repair this correctly. Some of them can't just be done in isolation. Perhaps if you've got cameras in the door mirrors that are part of a 360 degree vision system, you may need to calibrate it with a windscreen camera. Certainly you may need to consider the tailgate camera as well. So all of these systems need to be considered together to ensure their functionality because these are core safety systems of the vehicle and certainly something that the customer will notice if you have not repaired it correctly. Again, what you can't see in terms of electronic evolution is some of the things that manufacturers are now doing to keep up with the new mobile generation. Obviously, a car has a certain model life in terms of how long it's built for, typically six to nine years of a car being on the road. And obviously, we're used to our mobile phones being updated, well, almost annually. So what they don't want is the consumer to come and buy a brand new car and their phone is no good. So, what we're starting to see now, and this is one of the first examples of this, is more modular electronic architecture to enable the manufacturer to keep pace with mobile communication devices. What this will mean for us at the moment? A bit unclear. There are certainly many questions around it. It may be that it's easier for us to carry out electronic diagnosis. It may make it harder. But what it certainly will be is different. Vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. This is a new technology we're starting to see hit the roads this year. What this means is the car can talk to other devices. It may be another car, it may be infrastructure such as traffic signals, it could be other devices. But basically this will mean that the car is communicating data all of the time. What does that mean for you? Probably 10-15 years time the car will be talking directly to your technicians in your workshop but you will also need to make sure that it is actually talking to all the other things it's designed to communicate with on an accurate, reliable basis. This technology prevents accidents. This technology will probably reduce congestion in trapped busy cities. So the customer will want it to be working. So there is a huge, huge increase on the electronic and technical skills being demanded from you. So your future generation of workshop may have a much, much higher content of electronic engineer within it. So, this and many, many technologies are emerging and it's moving at a faster pace than it probably ever has before. We're seeing more and more advanced materials, more and more advanced electronics on, coming from pretty much every vehicle manufacturer. That's what Thatcham's here for. That's why we have the latest cars and why we deal with, on a daily basis, the vehicle manufacturers and the equipment manufacturers who produce this stuff, so that we can help you repair cars correctly for your customers. The challenges are going to get tougher, we are working those together and we can provide you the skills and the information to do what you need to do so you have a viable business and you are competitive going forward. So the future's probably a bit more challenging, but it is a future for independent car repair.